Hello and welcome to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be featuring a new game on the channel. This is Sovereign Syndicate, a new game which is due out on the 15th of January, so this video will be published uh, a few days ahead of that. The developers, uh, Crimson Herring Studios, were kind enough to send me a review copy, which I'm very much looking forward to playing. Uh, it's a game I've featured a couple of times on the channel in the past with uh, sort of different builds of the demo, seeing how things were coming along during development, was very impressed. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, it's uh, described as a Victorian steampunk RPG. Uh, it's got a couple of fairly big influences, I think, ones that it wears fairly uh, openly on its sleeve. It uh, draws quite heavily from something like Disco Elysium, in terms of if you've got this set of inner voices that you have dialogue with and kind of shape your choices and the character you play. And uh, in terms of setting, uh, it's a bit influenced, I would say, by an older game, Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. Uh, which, you know, is set in a Victorian steampunk world where fantasy races live alongside humans. Um, and yeah, which we'll see as we progress here. But without further ado, let's start up a new game. So that you can play as three characters, I understand. I've only ever played as Atticus Daly here, who was the character available in the demo. Uh, so it says, follow Atticus Daly as he explores the seedy underbelly of London's East Docklands in search of his mother, a reason for living, and his next fix. So archetypes is kind of your starting abilities in a way. Uh, Atticus is a prisoner to the voices in his mind, giving in to his voice, vices, surrendering to base urges, or being forced to reflect on a life gone wrong. Which voice speaks loudest? So animal instinct is kind of like a, a physical class, like brute force, strength checks, that kind of thing. Um, it can be quite intimidating. Blaming his fiery temper on his minotaur blood, he embraces intimidation in combat, swearing he has a handle on his vices. We could be spryness, which is, um, I think, uh, a bit more uh, of a rogue thief type archetype. So it says, as a magician, he is trained in escape tricks and sleight of hand. He is light-footed and nimble for a minotaur. So we have a trait, charlatan. Stealth and deceit are second nature as you fool the world of London with your cunning and subterfuge. So that could be quite interesting. It does have a bit of animal instinct, but it's lower. Um, and this, they're, they're kind of swapped around on this, but he also has self-discipline. So you tend to be a more restrained character. We also have wit. Uh, rationality suits him in a world that is unforgiving. He meets challenges with a silver tongue and understands basic machinery. So I guess this one again is kind of uh, a more intellectual class, maybe more inclined towards talking through a solution rather than relying on combat. And then we have self-discipline. He grew up in a crowded orphanage, using illusory magic to disguise himself as a human. He moderates his urges and keeps a cool head. So he is more trained in magic use. Uh, so I might go for that, actually. Um, they did a little bit of magic in the demo. He could, uh, as it says here, disguise himself uh, using a magic trick. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see if that kind of uh, how that comes across over the full game. So I'm going I'm to go self-discipline, I think. Uh, so, yeah, a bit, bit of wit, a bit of spryness as well, so usually I'd play a roguey type character, I like being able to pick locks and kind of get into places I'm not allowed, but let, let's do this. Man is least himself when he talks in his own person. Give him a mask and he will tell you the truth, Oscar Wilde. A dark shape looms over you. Against the guttering lamplight, the black shadowed form hovers unsteadily like a cutout in a magic lantern. You can't be sure whether it's a real living thing or another grim manifestation from your week-long bender, which at first blush you appear to have survived. Or is it the face of death come to claim you? In any case, the spectre seems to be in no hurry to move along. Painful memories prick your chin-addled brain. Now you recall why you're here. You chose this alleyway in London's East End to drown the last of your days in drink. Well, if this apparition isn't the angel of death, then even at suicide you have failed. Old crone. Atticus, he's coming. Wake up. Ugh, get out of my head, you old crone. Atticus Daly. Wit. So how I did the vo voice the voice in the demo, I think I'd try and do a version of my Atticus voice, but in a way that kind of made sense for the aspect of our personality that was talking, so I'll try to do that again. Nothing but a dark silhouette for a face. No, it's a mask. Ooh. 
self-reflection. So we saw something pop up there. I'll talk about that in just a second. His voice is cold and mechanical, like the hinge of a heavy iron door, concealing his identity, no doubt. Self-discipline checks. So this game uh, kind of, instead of like D&D uses a 20-sided dice, uh, in Sir, Sin, a Sovereign Syndicate, you'll be using a tarot deck. Um, now, there's been various versions of this as uh, through the demo, so I'm just going to kind of let the game explain how it works here in case there's been changes to the last time I played. But basically, um, you draw cards, and the higher card you draw, the better percentage chance you have of passing the check. Like, like a dice, but slightly differently. So we can see here it's a 17 difficulty check uh, versus 18 self-discipline. So that's kind of what my base score is, because as you remember, I've got self-discipline as my major thing. So it's telling me uh, that that's added on top of the various cards in my tarot deck that gives me a 94% chance of passing this check. There we go. So we rolled... I'll have to look at how that works. Um, cause it, I got a 3. I've, oh, okay. I've got 18 self-discipline. So if I click on character here... 18 self-discipline. I guess the base is 10 and then you add on top of that with your score. So that makes sense. Humors. As you play, you'll accumulate humors. When a humor bar is filled, the associated tribute will increase by one. Each humor is related to an aspect of your being and will increase the more you indulge or exercise that part of you. So basically, the more you use a particular skill or aspect of yourself, the more, the better you get at it. So that's good. Uh, so we, you know, it goes on the, the sort of four humors aspect of uh, medical science back a few hundred years ago. Um, so Animal Instinct is tied to Yellow Bile, Minor Tarot Suit is Swords, uh, and Wit is Blue, Self-Discipline Green, that's kind of where we're strongest, and Spryness is Red. self reflections so this is kind of about ourself. I won't read too much about this now, because let's just get on with the game. Who uh, <coughs> are you? Instead of a response, he proffers me a tin-stippled flask. A small kindness. Uh, we're self-disciplined, so I'm going to wave it off. Very well, then. Suit yourself. Stowing the flask. Stowing the flask, the stranger leans back into the dim light of the gas lamps. I can finally see his features in full. He wears a brass button travelling waistcoat, complete with a scarlet hood and a mask of ornate gold panels. It glitters in the gaslight. Delicately crafted. Finery like I've never seen. Now, when words appear in yellow or orange or gold, however you like to say it, um, it means that when you hover over them, you get a little, a little glossary explanation of what it means. Sometimes it's because they're leaning into kind of the Victorian um, street slang that would have applied at the time. Sometimes it's because they've got their own words, you know, that apply to their own world here. In this case, finery explains his clothing, especially when well made. On your feet now, you sorry sight. Dizzy from the head rush, it's hard to keep my balance. Who are you, and what do you want with me? A friend in need of your services. A friend? But a man of his station so deep in the Docklands spells trouble. Station one's social rank or position. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I need a moment to get my bearings. Fair enough, but I'll be watching. The stranger pulls back his waistcoat, showing off a gilded flintlock pistol. I think most people probably be familiar with that is what, what with what that is, but it's a handheld firearm with a flint striking ignition mechanism. I'm going to highlight all of these, uh, ones that I think are reasonably self-explanatory, um, but sometimes they won't be, and I'll highlight those, like this one. <laughs> Over the years, many a minge bag has come to collect. This balmy naff is no different. Minge bag meaning a despicable person. And balmy nap balmy, unstable or mentally unwell. And naff, a contemptible person or anyone lacking in taste or style. So many outstanding debts and foregone second chances. Is it all catching up to me? No matter. Let it be tonight then. Temperament. Temperament is a representation of your character's mental state, progressing from desperate, weary, content, optimistic, to hopeful. Your choices can change your character's temperament. Certain dialogue choices are only available based on your temperament score. So I lost five hope there. 
Um, so we'll look down here. So I'm at weary now on my temperament level, which is, um, which I think a bit like Disco Elysium might count as, a, as something of a health bar. So we'll see how that goes. Come now, surely things aren't so dire. It's up to me seeing every impulse to an outcome. Snuffing out the pleasures of life should I so desire. What I need is peace and quiet, a place to clear my mind. Got a phlegm? Not sure if it's peaceful or quiet, but behind that padlocked door you might at least escape the stranger. Is a good point. So we can zoom in and out a little bit. If I hold down tab, I get like a highlighted interactable. So let's have a look at the newspaper first. Illustrated London News. This week's edition. Sorry, I haven't got the whip voice tied down yet. A fleet-footed journalist takes to the East End, underground and undercover. The hard-boiled scoop on the courtesan killer. Who's really behind the murders and what is Scotland Yard still hiding from the public? Read on for the gory details. This story will boil your blood. Wit, ponder the news. Your inner voices are at odds. When you choose one voice over another, this changes the balance of your humours. Over time, these voices become stronger. So I've got a black bile now. That's related to wit, I think, isn't it? So I think wit and self-discipline are probably the ones that will end up doing the most. As is the job, I suppose. But it's a shame. No one deserves to die like that. All right, we're going to stick to self-discipline. That's true, and I've, keep it, I've kept their company before. Could have been an acquaintance of mine. So we've got the phlegm again. So if we go back to character now, if we, if we go up to self-discipline, we know that we've taken a few that have leveled it up. So you can see now I've got like a little 3 out of 10 where I've leveled that up. And when it reaches 10, this little number will tick up by 1, up to 19. Ariana. Uh, let's take a wit. It's entirely possible. Dolly's been hunted. It's rather curious. Uh, let's say we're going to investigate the murders. I'm no police special, but I'll see what I can find. Alright, we have a cane sword. Areas of interest. Explore the world around you to discover helpful items on your journey. East London hides many secrets. Then it says press tab, which we, we've already discussed. An evening cane concealing a steel blade in a cherry wood sheath. Below the brass figurehead is a band of crushed velvet. Velvet with an uneven, wrinkled, yet lustrous surface, produced by either pressing the fabric in different directions or by mechanically twisting it while wet. I didn't know that. Bow scarred and with a well worn handle. And suitable in aristocratic circles. Well, we'll take it with us. Should really keep better track of my belongings, even on a gin bender. Caps lock. Uh, we'll have a look at the liquor bottles. Geneva, rot gut, and dry gin bottles are strewn about, broken and empty. So Geneva is a Dutch spirit distilled from malt wine and flavoured with juniper. And rot gut, poor quality and potentially toxic liquor. Wager those are remnants of a day drowned in sorrow. Feels like ages ago. What's left of my stash? Oh, it's worth a closer look. Uh, yeah, so we've got a check here, a wit check, so we, um, we obviously have a lower wit score, I think it's, uh, 15, as it says here. Um, we need to pick a tarot card worth at least 5 in order to pass this, because it's 20 difficulty. We've got a 69% chance of doing it. Um, as I said, I'll kind of get used to the tarot card in this final build. How it used to work is that once you'd drawn a card, it was, uh, removed from your, that tarot deck until... All cards had been used up, and then it would shuffle. I don't know if that's still the case. If I go onto the tarot screen, it might explain that a bit better. So we've unlocked a Major Arcana card. There are 20 cards from the Major Arcana to unlock. Each Major Arcana card is unlockable only by a specific player character. Cards in the Major Arcana unlock specific personality traits. Once unlocked, you'll be able to select dialogue options that require that trait. You can see which Major Tarot cards have been found in the tarot panel. Okay. All right, so we've got this High Priestess, then. That's our starting card. Uh, it's gained the we've gained the Illusionist trait, and we'll now be able to select dialogue options requiring it. Okay, so as we go, we'll have the option to collect these uh, tarot cards, which are like perks, I suppose. Perks and sort of abilities. Um... So I don't... So I'm not still not sure if, you know, if we... if Once we pick cards for these checks, whether or not they, um are used up until we have to shuffle the deck. I'm not sure. Uh, it might just be a, a flat percentage chance each time. Wit. Let's look through the bottles. Oh, here we go. It's probably going to explain it now. 
To make a check, you will draw a card from one of the four major arcana decks, which we've covered, the, the green, blue, yellow, and red decks. Uh, each deck contains numbered from 1, the ace, to 14, the king, and they also contain the world, which will always succeed a skill check, so like a crit success, and the fool, which will always fail, and then reshuffle the deck. Okay. So we've got a crit fail and a crit success, and 1 to 14. So we rolled, <laughs> we rolled the ace. So we failed that check. Nothing here but empties. Okay, well, let's try getting into the padlock door, I suppose. A heavy door that's blocking my escape from the stranger. There's an oxidized chain and a padlock over the hasp, which is a hinged metal plate that fastens the door with a metal loop for a padlock. Should be a soft job, so as long as this lock isn't rusted through. So Animal Instinct, I have basically a 50-50 chance of succeeding it. Spryness might be a bit better. Oh, it's actually less. Because the difficulty is higher. So even though... Um, okay. Uh, well, let's try Animal Instinct. It's a slightly higher chance. No! So we got 16 on a 17 check. Oh no, he's lost five more hope. <laughs> Blast, I've got it open, but I've done myself a mischief. Hurt myself. <laughs> Skin my knuckles is all, but I don't imagine that lock can ever be used again either. I wonder where this passage goes. Away from that strange is enough for me. Alright, let's enter the warehouse. The passage is lined with stone walls, damp from the evening fog and the underground steam boiler used to heat the tenements above. Barrels line the walls and seem to occupy every available space in this underground storeroom. Cane rats scurry and squeak in the corners, kneading at their nests. The air is stagnant, full of dust and mould. A ways off there's the sound of a pump house at work, no doubt channelling sewage into the Thames. There's a dim light ahead. Perhaps you can find help, or at least a way out of the stranger's grasp. On your card now, there's no telling what's down here. I've seen the worst of the underground in my days. If trouble comes, I've got my blade and a silver tongue. Hey, so we've got a sleeping thug. A 30 something cove writhing on the cobbles. Must have had his fill. If he was on guard, easy now to get by him. We'll bash his head in. Might be safer that way. Uh, no, we're playing with, you know, I have played an Animal Instinct build, and we did that, but we're going to go with Witch this time. Ah, but he's only shickered beyond reason. Besides, maybe I know him. Can't remember his face, but that's one thundering night terror he's having. Anything in his pockets. We could do a 50-50 spryness check. Have a look. Or we could be self-disciplined. Let's have a look. Hey, we succeeded. We got exactly what we needed, the eight. Uh, so we've got five shillings and six pence added to the inventory. And a blood. Quick and efficient, like so many times before. He won't be needing it. Clearly he's burning it all on the bottle. Cool, so we have our inventory down here we can have a quick look at. So it's got our... It is shillings and, and pence. Great, so this is like the old uh, English... Uh, monetary system, currency, before we went to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, metric. I mean, I, I, we were metric about the same time I was born, so I've never had to deal with this currency system, but it says there are 12 pence and a shilling, and there are 20 shillings and a pound. Why it's those numbers, I couldn't tell you. And that's before we get into groats, halfpennies, thruppenny bits, uh, all, <laughs> all that stuff, which I don't, I don't really understand. Wooden coffer, red cedar panelled and cornered with iron. A sturdy but time-worn container. Self-discipline. No need to break into everything. What am I, minotaur or magpie? So we have an animal instinct check. It is 60%. That's not too bad. Or we could be wit. Kind of want to break into it. Let's try. Nope. <laughs> I've not hurt myself again. Oh no, I'm desperate. As I strike the lock, a jagged bit of rust drives into my skin. Oh, that'll leave a mark, but I've suffered far, far worse. And what great treasure is this? Trousers with a bib sewn across, and a pulley zipper fastening. 
Oh, well, their torch runs on a copper core battery, there's boots and breeches, and the waist goes enough pockets to carry a dining set. To be sure, it's a Sandhog uniform. A Sandhog, a construction worker in the underground tunnels. So what if it's, I tear the seams? It's not like someone's missing this pile of rags. The shoulder flaps will have to hang loose, my chest being too wide to snap the buttons down the placket. Placket, an opening in a garment with fastenings. Uh, all right, self-discipline check. Very easy check, but it's not a guarantee. We need at least a two. Got a five. Just gotta force it. Empty my lungs, I abandon the brass buttons, reaching instead for the torso belts. They fasten at the very last punch hole. So we're now in disguise. This could be a sign to lay off the swill a while. Yeah, maybe so. The source of many troubles. I could start with one less drink a day. Uh, yeah. Accept. One less a day. Oh, I can handle that. Alright, so we might be getting close to levelling up one of these. Don't be so sure. The naysayers will gab as they please, but I'm ready to change. No, oh, that's enough morn drink. Get on with it. Morn drink. To talk in a foolish or meaningless way. Not exactly worthy of Petticoat Lane, but in the shadows it should do the trick. Alright, so if we look at, uh, what was I going to look at? Oh yes, our character. So, yeah, we're 6 out of 10 on that now. 5 out of 10 on blue, 1 out of 10 on yellow, and 2 on, sorry, on red, and 2 on yellow. A manhole cover here. A disc of wrought iron loosened by a crack. Could be somebody's hiding place. You see, our little uh, portrait has changed now. We're wearing a disguise. Oh, it's very hard. Uh, 7%. I don't think we're going to try that. Better off finding a tool to get this open. I probably, I've probably killed myself just walking down the tunnel at this rate, just trying to open things. <laughs> a battered crate mouldering in, a, in sewer grime. Glad I have this mask on. It should keep out the dust. Uh, unlikely. Yeah, I'm gonna, we, we're taking damage in all these failed checks, so I think I'm going to... Go for this one. The smell. Oh, and it's too dreadful to bother with. That's rope. A length of braided horsehair. Stale and hardly saleable. Oh, I can use this to get the manhole cover off. It's in a bad state. Oh, spryness. It's in a bad state, but it might work with a proper tie. Well, it's brittle, but it could do the trick. Right, let's pick up the gears and cogs. Spare bits and bobs from a clockwork engine. Oh, I could I could hawk these to an engineer. Uh, gather. Might be useful. Try another go with this. So what's the check now? Uh, I've got a tool to open this. Uh, it's a heavy bugger, even with a tool. Alright, animal instinct, very hard still. Spryness, unlikely. Uh, I'm not going to risk either of these at this stage. I'm saying I thought the sound of a grating metal could draw attention. Yeah, we'll leave that for now. But it's interesting... Oh. Wait, watch it, there's someone on the stairs. With that head torch, he could be on patrol. I don't suppose he takes carnage to trespassers. Uh, before we proceed, I'll just quickly say um, that, you know, these different checks and bills and being able to do some stuff and not others, um, it kind of feeds into... Uh, this being a, quite a replayable game, you know, replay it as a different build to get different results. Uh, and then on that note, the developers have said in their FAQ that this is kind of expected to be, uh, on average, an 8 to 12 hour game. So not not huge, in, you know, as regards other RPGs, but perhaps one that uh, you, you'll want to replay to get uh, see different things. Um, as I'll be reading everything out, I'm kind of expecting it to be on the longer side of that, maybe even over that. Um, but yeah, useful information, I think. Um... I don't need to hide from anyone. I think we might be able to talk our way out of the situation. His uniform is stricken with unspeakable filth, and even with my goggles on, his head torch is blinding. He smells worse than the sewer walls. Must be a bilgeman. Bilgeman, a sewer worker below the status of engineer. Hey ho, Sandhog! Resumption in his tone. Does he not care for Sandhogs? I would take it personally. I'm not a Sandhog anyway. 
Was that a Sandy? Mumbling to yourself? Did I say that out loud? Well, at least he doesn't notice my ill-fitting uniform. What are you doing this side of the tunnels? Shouldn't you have your head in a hole somewheres? Uh, better lie, safer. I'm down here on official sandal business. You wouldn't crib, understand? Yeah, to catch on or understand. With a toss of his head, he laughs into his breathing tube and the light from his head torch glances off the cobbles. Sorry there, Cove, I'm whooping in your expense. But it's just so difficult to imagine a sand pig with a delegation of duties. Drill there, drill a bit here. Simple, isn't it? No, you don't know the half of it. Here's what I know. Your ankles are showing like a... Ch I'm going a bit 1930s here. Here's what I know. Your ankles are showing like a cherry bride. Your sleeves are all but shredded. And what's that you're carrying? An evening cane? Shouldn't it be a basket of drill bits? Oh, this is a special hammer. <laughs> we use it for the big, uh, big stubborn stones. And the story's true. Sandhogs are dumb as the dirt they dig in. You can't fool me. I know what a hammer is. Oh, I've already lied, so the truth is meaningless. Only the steel can speak for me now. Oh no, we're gonna have to kill him. I've, this is no, I've never done this. Uh, I've never not got past this guy. You're right, it's not a hammer, but nor is it a regular evening cane. I'll swiftly draw the cane sword. Point me out of this cesspool, just a finger in the right direction. His breathing tube is quiet from the greater hiss of fear growing inside him. Alright, if you follow this passage, there's a grate that needs refastening. Been meaning to fix it, but aside from the way you came, I swear it's the only exit. Uh, at least, at last a decent answer from a less than decent man. Sure as sight. Uh, sorry I stopped you. <clears throat> I'll just have a squeeze by, I suppose. Uh, be seeing you. <laughs> okay, well, we didn't have to kill him, so that's good anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Steamer trunk. A brass banded travelling trunk with sturdy corners. Fit for a long voyage, it's out of place down here. There's tin inside, I'm sure of it. Money? Yes. But the padlock is a carbon steel shackle and pin tumblers triple reinforced. Okay, well I'm I th yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have difficulty getting interlocks in this uh, build, I think. I'm I'm not gonna leave anything less than fifty percent I'm not gonna risk. I will leave it. I'll come back later with something to get this open. Furnace automaton. Speak up. Who disrupts the air? Send all business. Please clear the way. Believe me, I wouldn't hold you back. It's nice to know another workman. Then you must know of the operations down here. Oh, it's about these barrels along the wall. No doubt they've been used for smuggling. Of course I know what's going on, but since you were so slapdash to bring it up, I need to make sure you haven't been peaching. Peaching means, uh, yeah, informing upon or squealing. Dropping a dime. Um, oh, that's right and fly. The name's Hera, if it helps. File any reports you might need. I'm built to improve. The letters H-E-R-A are emblazoned on its chest plate. Uh, ask about the fire. Keeping the fire stoked, I see. Do you enjoy it? I delight in my work. I was made for it. And this boiler provides heat for the Sherlock tenements upstairs. As a sandhog yourself, you must know the reward of providing a service for the masses. Uh, and what do the letters stand for? Heat Energy Regulation Automaton, the latest iteration. Uh, Hera, wife of Zeus, in any case, it suits you. I'm thrilled to hear it. Now, can I help you? I should get back to the flame. Press for information. You were saying about the uh, operations down here? Oh, well, the barrels you see along the walls are full of gin. The hounds are distilling it with the heat from my boiler, and somehow the Sherlock Tenements upstairs haven't caught on. Hounds, the Dock Hounds, the most powerful criminal gang in the East End. The Sherlock Holmes Tenements are a low-cost housing option in the Docklands. These people must be freezing. It's only autumn now, but it feels like midwinter. Uh, I'd rather have the extra gin. Brings down the price. We can always deal with a little cold. Huh. A lot of my ilk came up from those tenements. Well, I couldn't face the dock hounds alone. It's hard enough keeping my own head above water. Ah, oh, they won't be easily swayed. Bootlegging is a regular tin press. <laughs> what else do you know about the gin barrels? Well, the steam gets siphoned and the barrels come and go. Some are fresh, and some have stood for several months, ready for a swiller. An excessive bout of drinking. Like a kegger, I suppose. The machine is keeping track. Automatic circuits, indeed. 
When the flame is healthy, I turn my attention to the walls, and before I know it, I'm whirring away. It's a queer feeling. Strange or unique feeling. If the hounds are stealing steam, then it's good reason to steal some of their bootleg for myself. Huh. <laughs> I'm not fit with a virtue circuit, but if you've convinced yourself, you're clear of any moral infidelity. Where would I find a barrel that's aged a few months? Behind the furnace, there's something of a staging area. That's where the barrels get carried out. Have a look for yourself, but I must get back to work. Uh. Okay, so, can we click on the furnace now? Embers burning fiercely as if by the jewel bright core of every flame on earth. Or oh, coals, banked with an unsurpassed dexterity. Air is all but eliminated. Nothing to do here but stare at the flames. Tiger bright flames in the brass bellied furnace, dying and living and dying and being reborn. Keep staring. A small fire, yet a microcosm of ever burning, ever changing oblivion. Keep staring. Sweltering temperature in the heart of the fire. A deadly dance that's hard to look away from. Keep staring. Self discipline. The, the heat billows out and my face is sweating now. Eyes half lidded and glazed. Keep staring. Here is a glimpse of the end for so many eternal. Sorry, the end for so many. Eternal pain for those who believe in it, or for the lost ones who believe in nothing. Sometimes, there's a voice in these unexamined objects, and I need only listen well to hear it. I keep staring, animal instinct. Are we lost five? Oh no! I'm down to ten. It's wonderful, but I'd better stop before I damage what little sight I have. <laughs> oh no! Ah, this is the keg he talked about. Barrel of moonshine, like any other, standing upright. It's ready for shipping out. Ah, this will take the edge off. I wonder if this is a good idea. Uh, I was going to give it up, wasn't I? But it might cheer me up. I'm tapping this barrel. Oh, the gin hits my belly and the taste is, uh... Oh, delicious. Now that's what I call bootleg. And there's a hazy aura I wanted, as if every object could bloom at any moment. I've gained five hope. Okay, we're back up to 15. Uh... Let's have another. Did I get five more? No. I did get black bile though, I think. Oh, that hit the spot. Oh, I've lost five hope. <laughs> Somatic nervous system is slowing down. Alright, that's that's it. I Okay, I should have stopped. Could have should have quit when I was ahead on that one. Oh well, let's go to the sewers. Maybe I'll have an opportunity to get my <laughs> get back up before I die. Edging through the grate, you're greeted by the droning sound of rushing water and a smell that's near unbearable, hanging in the air so thick you can almost taste it. Hooves are clumsy in the dark as you stumble along the passageway, the sound of water flow and machinery echoing off the bricks from all directions, a meshing of gears that's familiar but unsettling. Following the light, you come into a torch-lit chamber, but it seems you're not alone. Notes of troubled voices peek over the noise, an air of indignance and irritation, but also of fear and desperation. Something's not right here. You've stumbled on an argument, no doubt, but worse than that is a deep foreboding. Something else shares these sewers, a deeper evil crawling through the bowels of London. All right. A welter of bricks and rotting planks blocking the way through. Come back with an axe, that'll do the trick. Yeah, I've run into more dawning obstacles, just have to give this a wide berth. Okay, I've always been intrigued by this area. I don't know if we can get to it. No, I think it's just set dressing. Uh, okay, so we don't necessarily have to avoid that patrolman, I don't think, but... Can make for a slight York. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in here though first. I might. No. Oh. Through the hole is a chorus of machinery, the torpid crank of some heavy clockwork, the chittering of a telegraph, and the ever-present rumble of steam in the walls. The archway is fit with a blast door that's been left open. The control room for the pump house, no doubt. All right, let's go and check it out. Cause we might be able to get some. Uh, some of this back. Uh, let's talk to the engineer first. He got a bit miffed before when I started fiddling with stuff. Hey, um... Respectfully, Sandhog, I've got a deal on maintenance on my hands. He's a grizzled face in a world where he slumped to his shoulders, yet there's still a spark in his eyes. 
I'd better make a decent impression out the gate or he mightn't spare me any time. So this is greyed out, but this is kind of my thing. I don't know why I'm having to rely on animal instincts. Uh, I can't frighten him. Maybe I don't have that self-reliant thing? I don't know. <gasps> but we succeeded on a very low check. This character has gained the intimidating trait and will now be able to select dialogue options that require it. Hey, that's pretty cool. Ah, oh, I'm pleased with that. Listen up, shovel logger. I've got a few questions. Hey, well, you got the gumption, I see. I suppose I can answer a few questions. Shrewdness and drive. Now that I have his attention, let's see if I can earn his trust. Easy skill check asking about the barrels. Uh, just need a five to succeed on this. Yay, we got a ten. I caught more than a few whiffs of liquor on my way down. What is it? Bootleg in the barrels. Mmm, that's the idea. See now, what's your name? I smell an opening and some we're sailing to boot. Drink lots of alcohol and enjoy thy oneself with others in a lively way. Agus Daly, pleased to meet you. Hey, and I'm John Teller. See, I've got it figured. Minotaurus of keen noses, so ye must have sniffed out the liquor in my locker. Same as what's in the barrels. Fetch us a few bottles then. I'll finish my readings and we'll have a drink. Got five hope back. Oh, we're up to 20. Still desperate, but better than we were. Sounds like we're plunging into a pool of fire water. Okay, so we can get his we can get his stuff out of his locker now. A wooden locker with steel dowels and bolts embossed with the seal of the senior service. And that is Her Majesty's Naval Service. And apparently chock full of bowls. Go on, he offered you a drink. It'd be rude to refuse. Alright, let's see if this liquor's any good. All in neat rows with orange rubber stoppers. But I wonder if this is a good idea. Oh, I could use a drink. <laughs> Black buyer, we've got McGrady's gin added to inventory. Task started, gin collector. I could use a drink, yeah. The sewer stench is muddling my thoughts and I need some clarity. Besides, a few sips of the engineer should get him talking. Got, well, oh, oh, we're back up to weary. All right, uh, talk to John Hat. Yeah, let's talk to John Teller again. Hey, there's a good man. Let's have a taste. Um, have a drink. Hey, wit's gone up. To your health, Teller. Heck, what do you think, Mum? Oh, the flavour's right. A banquet for the senses. Hey, that's the spit it. Um. I don't want to make this go down again. I'm quite glad I've got back up to weary. Ah, oh, well, I've had enough for now. Besides, I still need to find my way out of here. Well, away from the stranger if I can swing it. We don't have a piece, then. Got this purity from our ramshackle distillery. Covers keep busting them up before. Anyone can hone it down. Law enforcement. If I gush about the gin too much, then you might start yattering about the distillation process. Oh, it's beyond wonderful. Only medicine that ever did me any good. Hey, 30. I've been watching how the hounds are doing it. When work's slow, the pump house captain and I have a couple of drinks and a marvel at the vats in the pump house. Oh, that's a dreamy glow in his eyes. Ah, with a turn and gumption, I'd lead these dialers to some other cove. If I had my own stills, I'd mix up liquor mothers had used to feed babes. A dream's only a dream till you follow it, eh? No, you'll do it someday. Ah, the allure of ambition. Still, pride can make a man fiendish. Now then, when I heard about that ladsman? A ladsman, a criminal teaching children how to steal in exchange for a cut of profits and or other assistance, such as safe lodging. He's referring to the quarrel down below. Uh, yeah, what's there to tell? Hey, well, she's a cut at us what's supposed to be his charge. No, she wants out, but the bastard is full of demons. Not only is he a ladsman, but he's also the front man for the bootlegging down here. What else do you know about him? Uh, I got his name, Carlisle McGrady. He puts it on bottles for promotion, but I imagine McGrady is a handle. So that's a, an assumed name. McGrady sounds familiar, but I can't quite place it. Want to know his blackest secret? Uh, what secret? Uh, it starts with the Sherlock Tenements. As I've been built over the sewerway, went enough. They had steam safing out of their boilers, courtesy of the hounds. Reminds me of the orphanage. We used to burn the bedposts when the cold set in. 
making moonshine takes a deal of steam. No wonder the tenants are fuming. Hot water running thin, radiators shut through on cold nights. Stolen sea steam does sound like the work of the dockhands. Hey, yeah, just a minute. You ain't no copper's narc, are you? A police informant. He looks rather serious, like the gin is wearing off. Can't stand a copper. Hey, well, glad to hear it. One more question. The crank atop the stairs, what's that for? Uh, it controls the sluice gate, rising and lowering the water down below. But that peaky bastard always jams up. Good thing I wouldn't need it till the pump house is operational again. Well, Mr. Teller, I've kept you long enough. Yeah, don't tell anyone I gave you a free sample. Can I do anything with this? Meters and levers are gleam in the torchlight. Okay. Yeah, so I was never able to, in the demo, never able to do anything with this crank handle. I wonder if we're going to be able to do something now. Wooden handle attached to a cylindrical crank. Yeah, he said he won't be using it for a while. Does, does some heavy lifting this. We could try it. Wonder what it does. Let's give it a turn. No go. It's catching on some unseen sprocket. Very unlikely. Let's not break it. It could be important. Here, we might be able to do it later. Let's head out of here for now. We're merely weary now. Where's that dude? I'd rather avoid him. No, he's coming. <laughs> Patrolman up ahead. Don't flex a muscle. Who's that creeping up in the shadow light? State your business. Oh, Cyclops of the Park Spade. Standard issue for sewer work. Oi, Sandog, what's your business here? He's full of piss and vinegar, but also full of poppycock. I'll wager his authorities are claim and nothing more. Already have the stranger to worry about. Am I up to challenging this lanky bloke as well? We could do a wit check. Easy skill chance, 79%. Uh, 62 on this. We do have the intimidating trait or spryness. Uh, let's lie. Yay. 22. Ton of work, nothing of import. Well, I'm in the pump out. I'm the pump house captain. This chamber's in my bailiwick, so bailiwick. So be more specific. I don't actually know how to pronounce that word. I've seen it written down. An area of expertise or jurisdiction. Excellent delivery, but he's just not buying it. Better try an honest approach. I can't lie. I'm not really a sand hog. Uh, well, even so, if you're creeping about down here, then I must have your name and citizen number. Give him a false name, that'll shake the heat. Then again, what's another mark on my record? It's not like I ever pay the fines. Ah, uh, sure, it's Arthur Dale, CN678751. Oh, we've gained the star, like we've gained the charlatan trait, and we'll now be able to select dialogue options that require it. Cool. Well, I'll be in touch with a proper citation. Apparently this bloke's a grandee. Better get some answers when I can. A person of high rank or eminence. Uh, what's the way out? Surely there's a way out, perhaps towards the pump house? Off limits. Besides, she's locked down for maintenance. If I was you, I'd head street side before the morning doves. Before the morning doves? Probably just dawn, I guess. What's going on with the argument? Understood, Captain. How about that scuffle down below? Well, the tall fellow holds weight with the hounds. I shouldn't like to interfere. All right. Right then, Captain. I'll just be on my way. The bum house captain breathes a sigh of relief, eager to get back to his patrol. Now, before we go down, uh, look at this. A barrel perched on the ledge while the argument rages. I can hide, I can hide up here and watch the dispute. All right, eavesdrop. Let's have a listen. You'll pad me pockets until I say die. It's like the engineer said, this bloke is a ladsman and she's a cut purse, but she doesn't seem keen on staying that way. I'm sick of stealing and I'm sore of begging all the more, it's shameless. Pity, but the odds are in his favour. Poor girl's got strapping tape holding her boots together. Uh, we could do a self-discipline, go down there and break it up. Let's try that. I'm too far away to be of service from up here, better head downstairs. Let's have a quick look at these, see how I'm doing on this. So, 6 out of 10 on yellow. Uh... We've actually raised wit once, and we're on the way to doing more. Self-discipline, we're getting towards leveling that up. And spryness, yeah, we ain't doing too well on that. All right, so let's go down. Let's grab some gears and cogs. They're still arguing, but why don't you move, move any further, and then I notice me. There's a door just beyond where they're standing. That'd be one way to escape this ruddy mess. Well, I'll have to face him sooner or later. 
and he looks ready for a fight. I'll wait for the right moment. No need to flash the steel if I don't have to. How about an inside tip? You know well I'm in with the oddsmen. Uh, referees for gambling events. Keep your crooked tips. You were supposed to shelter us, pay us and protect us. But I wager there's a future for me beyond London. The only way you'll leave London is in bits and pieces floating down the Thames. She flashes her eyes at me, some kind of signal. I could try for a clean cut between the shoulder blades, but what if he's quicker on his feet than he looks? Let's settle this with words. Up to 19. He's in evil trouble, but he doesn't have to die. Oi, you there! Yeah, what's a sand pig doing down this way? Yeah, clear out. Lay off the girl, otherwise I'll shatter your kneecaps and fix you for a bath chair. Ooh, I forgot I didn't see that was a check, but it was our only choice. Uh, how are we doing on this? 30. Uh, yeah, I've read that. Yeah, you must be. You might be bigger, but you won't get the best of me. I need my blade if I need to defend myself. All right. Oh dear. Oh, spryness. Hey, we did it. <laughs> oh, lowering my stance. Lowering my stance. I'm ready for whatever the old blighter throws at me. Ooh. I step back and he whiffs at the air with his baton. He's on his back foot. Now's my chance to return the favour. Oh, God. Attack! No! He's done more. He's done. He's done more than enough. It's time to set him straight. Channeling the old agile, agile Sturk of old, a young bull or cow. I leap to my full length. Oh, this might be the killing blow. Bugger all! He spins around and dodges me like a mongoose. Senseless, violent. This is hardly worth my time. Is he running off? It. Yeah, it figures. I know a coward when I see one. Oh no. Guess I'll be off then. Catch me if you can. Now you're lucky I'm busy with that insolent urchin, otherwise I would have finished the job. Uh, well, we gained five and we lost five. I'm beginning to recall. I'm beginning to recall who that mucked up fellow was. Try to remember. Hey. That's it, we were in a band of pickpockets together as kids. Carlisle McGrady. He was older, of course, something of a honcho. Oh, I've never not saved the girl. Interesting. She's a source of information. A monstrous door of high carbon steel. No way through without a key or high explosive. Ah, oh, is this the end of my underground road? Crivens, there's no getting through. No escape from the stranger this way, you'll need a key for the door. Yeah. Oh well, what's this flask? Somebody hit a bottle back here. Looks like a nostrum, a purportedly effective medicine available without prescription. Smells rather dangerous, at least to the unexpected. But might be useful. Alright, uh, let's try that. This ladder wasn't available in the demo. I wonder where it goes. There was no escape in the sewers. Only more danger you've narrowly dodged. But it's nothing so ghastly as what might become of you at the hands of the stranger. You hardly ever see a handheld firearm in the Docklands. That means he's come from afar to track you down and he won't give up easily. And what of this old crone mumbling in your mind? Would another gin slumber put a seal on her words, or is she now more than a figment? Is she in step with your pulse and your heartbeat, so deeply rooted you might never escape her raspy chattering? By the break of morning you should have some answers, but until then you stumble on the cobbles half-woken, the hangover clawing your skull like a prisoner in bondage. Oh, okay, I'm here. All right, yeah. This is on the same map. Fair enough, but I think we'll leave it there for today. Uh, I'm going to come back tomorrow. We'll play more, pick up where we left off. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's good. I really enjoy this game, and hopefully you've enjoyed watching it. And if you have, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be great. It'd be great if it, as well if you could leave me a comment and just think, uh, you know, just tell me what you think about the game so far, about uh, the story, the characters, uh, you know, kind of the the manner of speaking to our internal personas. Let me know what you think. I'm very interested to hear. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, it'd be great if you could do that as well. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time for more Sovereign Syndicate. Bye for now.